Jen alone, but you are the agenda of this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to uh, ask Pastor to come to the front. Can we honor him with warm hands? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are waiting. You are waiting. God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. Father, thank you this morning that we can look to you. In spite of circumstances and in spite of what's happening in this world, Father, we have an understanding that we are in this world, but we are not of this world. We are but pilgrims, pilgrims of God, and the most glorious, wonderful pilgrimage through the journey of life on this earth. Thank you, Lord, O oh God, for the Word of God. I pray this morning that you give us a clear understanding of your Word. I pray this morning, O oh God, that faith will come to the heart of every person that is under the influence of my voice. I pray in the name of Jesus that hope will come Oh Lord God, I pray that strength will come in the name of Jesus. Thank you that Lord God, just as you sent forth the rain and the snow from heaven, waters the earth and causes them to bring forth in life, so shall it be with the word that you have sent, O oh God. It shall accomplish, Lord, the purpose where to you have sent it, O oh God. Your word, O oh God, is full of power. Your word will not return to you void. In the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning, O oh God, that we have the word of life. We have the word of God to hold on to you. It doesn't matter what society is saying. It doesn't matter, O oh Lord God, what the opinion of men are. But Lord, the opinion of God is greater. The word of God is greater. The word of God is truth, O oh God. The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I thank you this morning that light shall break forth for the people of God. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Where there was no way, Father, all of a sudden, God be a way in the name of Jesus. We thank you this morning, O oh God. When there was nothing, there will be something in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, O oh God, that this morning we can declare that great is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Because he loves us. Father God, we do love, O oh Lord God. We thank you this morning in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, we give you glory, honor, and worship. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place this morning. Have your way with us this morning. In Jesus' wonderful name, and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. I 
Gada, Sprama Breda Skuro Moshadaha, Spiomrakia Sibra Ashkeri Vibaro Moskarta, Shingro Sharabo Brahaski, Sengro Shabro Moskarta. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. How we love you. We are following you. Our hearts and our lives. We are It's all about you. It all belongs to you, Lord Jesus. Most worthy praise, glory, and honor are you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Come on, give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Come on, break it down. Ah, 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 ah. So black as I just want to share this. It's not part of the message, but. I just want to share this. And we have such trust through Christ to God. We have such trust through Christ toward God. The life that we live, we live by the faith of the one, the Son of God who loved us, who gave himself for us. It is no longer we who live, but it is he who lives. multiplied toward you in the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ his son. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Good morning and welcome everybody. Those watching us welcome to you too. On this morning, it is an awesome morning. What a wonderful morning. What a wonderful day. Amen. You know, I'm, Pastor Sherman and I were, you know, conversing this morning. He said something really that really moved my heart. That when it comes to Monday, tomorrow being Monday, you'll find, come what may, rain or cold, people will be at work. But when it comes to the house of God, the attitude is different. It should not be so. When it comes to the things of God, it's different. I know why. You know, I shared with you last week about faith without works being dead. How we ought to live by faith. The book of Hebrews tells us the just shall live by faith. God is very clear on that subject because he then goes on to say, if any man turn back, if any man draw back, my soul takes no pleasure in him. God takes no pleasure in anyone that looks back. In the words of Jesus, once the hand is set to the plow, if any man look back, he becomes unfit for the kingdom. Once you look back, you become, un to put it this way, you become unfit for kingdom use. When you look back, 
you are of no godly use because you focus on your past and not where God is leading you to. You see that the minute you look back, you are, you are of no kingdom use. You are of no godly use. God cannot use you. You see, when it comes to serving God, when it comes to serving God and committing to God, the most important thing, and I think Sister Alicia shared on that last week, is availability. Is availability. Availability. That's why the Bible says many are called, few are chosen. Because not everybody is available, because everybody is busy in their own thing, doing their own thing. When I mean, the Bible says the just shall live by faith, let me ask you a question. If you were to stand up now and try and jump, what would happen? Would you stay in the air? If you tried to jump, what will happen? Come back. If you were on the roof and you decided that you want to fly and you let go and you flap your arms, what will happen? Why? Because of gravity. The law of gravity. What goes up must come. As much as gravity is a law, faith is a law. Faith is a law. And I shared it with you this morning. And when God says the just shall live by faith, that means, listen, faith overrides every other law that there is. When Jesus was in the wilderness and he was with the multitude, and there was only a little boy who came with a lunch box of loaves, a few loaves and fish. Now, I've heard some, you know, people like that should not be behind, be behind the pulpit. Some preachers preaching and saying, yeah, but in those days the loaves were bigger. Excuse me, if the loaves were so big to feed a multitude, then how is it possible that a little boy can carry that? How is it possible? You see, let me tell you, that is not a that that is not faith. That's not faith preaching. We preach faith. We we yet to deliver the word of faith, the message of faith, because faith overrides every other natural law. Faith is not of human origin. That's why an earth man, a natural man, cannot understand the things of faith because it's foolishness to him. Faith is of the spirit. It is born of the spirit. The book of Corinthians, Paul speaking, he says, we have received the same spirit of faith. And what does that, what does that, it says, I believe, therefore I speak. Your faith is not of human origin. When Jesus was in the wilderness with the multitude, there was a law. There were two laws in operation, natural laws. The law of economics. Economics. The resources are scarce. The resources are scarce, but the demand is great. The law of supply and demand. Then there was the law of lack and scarcity. Two laws. The law of lack and scarcity. And what Jesus done, it's amazing. He took the bread, he took the loaves, he took the fish. He looked up to heaven and gave thanks. Amen. Gave it to his disciples. Amen. And the disciples started distributing. Amen. It means as they were giving, 
It was multiplied. There was another law in operation now. It was the law of faith. Faith overrode those laws. Faith all of a sudden began to cause things to multiply. Are you getting that? That's a law. You see, that's why Jesus even says, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will not just do what was done to this mulberry tree, but you speak to this mountain. You speak to this mountain and you tell it. Be uprooted and be cast into the sea. What Jesus was saying, he's speaking about mustard seed faith and then he speaks about a mountain. What he's trying to say is that faith can get anything done. It means that nothing is impossible with faith. Nothing is impossible with faith. You see, faith does not have its origin with man. It is not a, of a natural origin. The origin of faith is supernatural. It is supernatural. And we know from scripture that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The word of God is supernatural. A natural man will never understand it. Never understand it. But a man who's born of the Spirit, he understands it. Because it's spiritually discerned. He walks with discernment. And then God says the just shall live by faith. That means that anything that comes your way by faith, you override it. When that storm arose in the midst of the sea, Jesus rebuked the winds and spoke to the waves and there was a calm. That is faith. He released faith. He released faith. You see that? Faith will calm the storms in your life. It is so important. And here's the thing. Every child of God has faith. Whether you were born again just about five minutes ago, you received the Lord Jesus in your heart. You have faith. Even if you were born just yesterday, you have faith. If you were born again just yesterday, you have faith. In the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 3, Paul writes, he says, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. Think soberly. Think intelligently. According as God has, what? I, I love this. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. God has dealt. He's dealt. In other words, there's so much that God deals out. Jimmy, there's your faith. Donnie, there's your faith. James, there's your faith. Ronell, there's your faith. Felix, there's your faith. Janine, there's your faith. Are you with me? There's your faith. He dealt to everyone. A measure of faith. He dealt to you a measure of faith. Because God, listen, God, you know many times, and you know, you find Christian folks, they, sometimes they have a mentality that really makes me wonder. They tend to think God doesn't know about their circumstances. God knew long before you were even born, God knew everything there was to know about you. He knew everything. He knew the day that you'll be conceived. He knew how you'll be conceived. He knew how you'll be born. He knew who your mother would be, who your father would be. He knew which two, which DNA to put together to make you. He knew everything about you. He knew which day that you would be born. He knew everything that, you know, from the day you born to the day you leave this earth. He knows everything about you. That's why he gave you faith so that the day you become born again, that faith that he gives you can cause you to accomplish 
is whatever he's called you to do. God has dealt to everyone a measure of faith. The book of 2 Corinthians 3, verse um, 2 to 3, Paul says, You are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly, you are an epistle. You are a living letter of Christ, ministered by us, written but written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God. Amen. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is of the heart. You are a living letter. A letter written by the living God. Say amen to that. Amen. You are a living letter written by the living God. Amen. Being written by God and read by men. You, listen, you as an individual, you are a letter to your generation from God. You are a letter. Others are watching your life. Let me show you something in the book of Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. Praise God. Verse number 8. And at Lystra, a certain man, what? A certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. There was a man sitting in Lystra, sitting. He was born that way from his mother's womb. God knew everything about this man. And God knew on, a, on an appointed day this man will be positioned there because I'm going to send someone. I'm, gonna, I'm sending a letter. See, that's why, you, you, that's why many people, you can't afford not to hear the word of God because then you're missing out on God's letter to you. Many people are facing things in their day-to-day -day, day -day lives. And sometimes people are confused. And God sends a letter. He sends a man or he sends a woman of God to share his word. And then you're not there. And then when the trials come and the things happen in your life, you don't have no ammunition to stand. Come on, somebody. God knew about this man. And he knew that on that day, he'll be in Lystra. He'll be sitting there. Because I'm going to send my letter, I'm going to send my servant Paul, who's going to preach the gospel. This man was born lame. He had no strength in his, in his legs. Nothing. This man, watch, this man heard Paul speaking. He heard Paul speaking. What was Paul speaking? The word of God. The gospel of Jesus Christ. And as this man heard, faith was coming. Then Paul, watch, Paul observing him intently. While Paul was ministering, he was watching this man. And seeing that he had faith to be healed, Paul said with a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. Oh, Jesus. You see, that's why. You see, when the word is coming, I shared with you about last week about Grafe, Logos, and Rhema. Paul was declaring the word. Everybody was hearing the word. But to this man, the word became a Rhema word. Because when Paul was looking at him, when Paul saw that he had faith, and Paul just says, 
Stand up straight to your feet. This man, he had no feeling in his legs before, but Paul speaks to him and Paul says, stand up straight to your feet. The Bible says the man leaped. He leaped and walked. Wow, you see that? This man was born lame. Never ever walked a day in his life. Never ever stood a day in his life. But Paul speaking the word. And faith comes. And faith is coming. Faith is coming. Faith is coming. And Paul is watching this man. And all of a sudden, Paul tells him, stand up straight to your feet. The man doesn't question and say, but Paul, I was born this way. The man doesn't question and say, but Paul, everybody here knows I had to be carried in here. Ask the person next to me. They probably carried me in. Paul, I, I can't do this. I've never done this. This man looking at Paul, and come on, when Paul was presenting the gospel to him, and Paul was presenting it and saying, I can do all things through Christ. That's what this man had in him. I can do all things through Christ. I can stand through Christ. And this man just stood to his feet. The Bible says he leapt and he walked. He didn't just, it wasn't like, you know, get up slowly. Because they say, this man was done. When you leap, it's instantaneous. Instantly. Instantly. What happened? Faith overruled the diagnosis that you'll never walk again. Amen. So it doesn't matter what you've been diagnosed with. Faith will override it. Amen. Talk to me, somebody. And here's the thing. While this man was listening to Paul preaching, this man had faith. Every child of God has faith. But as long as he just had his faith, it was not enough. Just having faith is not enough. His faith, his faith was so workable. It was so workable and so evident that Paul could see it. And he saw that this man had faith to be healed. And it's the same with many born again believers today. They have faith. But the adversities of life have become mountains over them, or mountains so high that they can never see themselves on top of the mountain, on top of the situation, on top of the adversity. They can never see themselves that way. Yet when you speak to them, they say, I have faith. But having faith is not enough. Faith, you see, faith is like currency. If you go to the United States, the currency there is the US dollar. In South Africa, the currency here is the South African rand. In the UK, the currency there is the British pound. In the EU countries, the currency there is the euro. You see, your currency you use in the country that you are in. Now, faith is like a currency. It allows you to transact. Faith allows you to transact with the kingdom. So wherever you are, you can transact. Now here's the issue. Somebody has two million rand in their bank account. And they've got, let's say, a hundred rand in their wallet. The wallet is in their pocket. But they're hungry. They're hungry. Are they going to get full? 
knows that hunger will never be satisfied. As long as that money stays in the bank and as long as that money stays in the wallet, in the pocket, it's of no use. They can show the money. Somebody will say, show me your faith and I'll show you my faith by my works. Speaking James now. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, as long as that money is in the pocket, that person will never ever quench that hunger. That hunger will never be quenched. It will always remain. Because the person has a responsibility to open the purse or open the wallet, take the money and go and buy something to fill the belly. In the same way, you've got faith as a child of God. But if you're not going to use it, it's of no use. Your faith is dead, just like that money. That money is dead, but that money is dead. It's of no use to you. But the minute you begin to use it, then now you start transacting. And then it starts working. The money is working for you. Come and talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. So without corresponding actions, faith is of no use. It is dead. Amen. It's the same with this crippled man. When he heard Paul preaching, if he began to argue with Paul, he would never ever have been healed. If he just sat there, and if Paul said to him, stand up straight to your feet. Because that's what Paul said. Paul said, stand up straight to your feet. That's all Paul said. This man did more than stand up to his feet. He leaped, he jumped. He jumped and he walked. You see, so he went, he, he far exceeded the expectation of the people that were around him. Purely by responding to the word. You see, there were many that were hearing him. And God was writing a letter on their hearts. And as God was writing the letter, people were watching and all of a sudden when Paul says to this man, stand up straight to your feet, people are watching this man. And all of a sudden, I mean, just picture this. Someone you know that was born that way and you in a meeting and all of a sudden this person jumps to their feet and starts walking. What's your reaction? What's your reaction? Surely God is amongst us. You see, God writes your letter. Your, your, the story of your life, God is writing it because people are reading it. People are watching your life. Listen, the best sermon that you could ever preach is not the amount of scriptures that you can quote off by heart, but it is your life that speaks. Because when people look at your life, they can surely say, surely God is with this one. How is it possible? I mean, look at Daniel. Daniel was thrown to the lion's den. And the next day when the king came and he said, Daniel, he said, oh, Daniel, your God saved you. Amen. Daniel says, my God sent his angel at night. And then the king makes a decree. Surely the God of Daniel, he is God. Amen. He is God. Come on, somebody. When they needed dreams interpreted and nobody else could interpret it. I mean, look at Joseph, look at Daniel. What happened? They interpreted exactly as... And they made a decree. Surely, the God of Joseph, the God of Daniel, he is God. Because no one can do this except God is with him. What about the servant, the unnamed servant of Abraham? Abraham sends his servant to go and find a bride for Isaac. And when Abraham sends him off, he says, my God will send his angel with you. This servant was watching the life of Abraham. Because when he watched the life of Abraham, he knew that surely 
There is a God that's with Abraham because Abraham has fed so much. And when he gets there to the place, he doesn't know what to say. And he starts speaking. He says, oh God of my master Abraham. He doesn't know which God to call on, but he knows that hey, there's a God of my master. And when he speaks to God, God responds exactly to how he requested that God would reveal to him the one that would be Isaac's bride. Amen. And he speaks to the family and he says, the God of my master Abraham. The God of my master Abraham. You see, someone is leading your life. Our children are leading our lives. They too will get to a place in their lives I mean, you know how kids are. We've all been there. We've all done that. When you're a teenager, ah, they think they know everything. Mom and dad think they know everything. Come 21, you get that key. I, I know what to do, what do they know. Come 30, they were right. Because now the challenges of life, they begin to face them. They get married and they begin to face the challenges that marriage faces. Or they get employment and they begin to face the challenges of employment. And then there's, you understand, and sometimes mom and dad are no longer there. They're gone to be with the Lord and all that the child has is what they dream from the parent. So they say, the God of my parents. Someone is watching. People are watching you. Unsafe people are watching you. Our unsafe families are watching our lives. They look and they say, but how is it possible? How is it possible? I mean, in the midst of lockdown, remember the first lockdown was so hard, everywhere was shut. We heard testimonies of people in the church that got promoted. People in the church that started businesses in lockdown. Why? Why? Because it's God. It's God. It's a faith thing. It's a principle of faith. Hallelujah. The problem is not that people don't have faith. The problem is that people don't use their faith. You know, let me give an example. We have a sister, we have, we have a sister in the church. Sister Rama. You all know Sister Rama. Sister Rama was on her way to church a month or so ago on the way to church, she's dressed up for church and from already the Thursday she was feeling, you know not, she wasn't feeling well but she kept praying and Sunday she was on her way to church and then it became so severe so she said okay, before I go to church let's just pass the hospital So they pass the hospital, they go to the hospital. Little did she know, she already had a heart attack. When she got to the hospital, the doctor was even amazed. Why are you still doing here? <laughs> Do you know you had a heart attack? You didn't even know. Then they rushed her with an ambulance to Peter Maritzburg to do, you know, to do some surgery on her heart. They, she got there, everything just went in sync like that and all of, you know, everything was, was fine. Praise God, she's healed, she's, she, she's healthy, she's well. And someone talk to me somebody. I mean, she was on her way to church and she said, okay, she'll first go there and then come to church. She didn't say, ah, oh, you know, I'm sick, I won't go to church, but let me go to the doctor. No, she, in her mind, she was going to church. You see, the, the Bible says 
it is acceptable according to what one has. It is acceptable according to what one has. So the fact that, you see already when she saw herself in the house of God, she saw her healing. Because the house of God is where she gets the bread. That's where she eats. That, that's her bread. And she says, I'm going there and then I'm going for my food. But already, it worked for her already that by the time she got to the hospital, because she purposed in her heart, it was acceptable according to the heart. It did work out. We have another example, Sister Rachel. Sister Rachel is well over 60 with comorbidities. Diagnosed with COVID. Diagnosed with COVID. She ended up in hospital. I was amazed. Man, I was amazed. I did a video call and we prayed. I prayed with Sister Tracy and Sister Jason that we were praying. I was amazed. The very next day, Sister Tracy phones me and says, Pastor, I just want to let you know, my mom has sowed a seed this morning for a healing. <laughs> she, sowed a, like, she sowed a seed for a healing. Within a week, I mean, she was in the hospital, they were battling with, you know, I mean, the oxygen levels were fluctuating, but she never ever ended up in ICU. The seed spoke for her. Exactly a week later, she was discharged back home. Come on, that's God. Praise God. Praise God. What am I, what am I sharing? It's, you see, as long as you have faith, but you're not using it, it means nothing. It's not that a person doesn't have faith. You have faith, but you're not using it. You've got to use your faith. Tell your neighbor, use your faith. Use, use your faith. Use it. It's, it's a gift from God to you. It's God's gift to you. Use it. You with me? I mean, faith doesn't consider the facts. Faith doesn't look at the facts. Faith considers the word over the facts. Look at Abraham. Remember Abraham? The book of Romans tells us that Abraham, Romans chapter 4, Abraham didn't consider his age. I mean, the facts on the table were against Abraham. His age was against him. Sarah's age was against him. I mean, for so many years, they've never ever had a child. But God says you'll be a father of many nations. And Abraham responds in faith. And by responding in faith, the womb opened. And Abraham and Sarah had a baby. And then barrenness is history. You see? Abraham was certain what God said he will do. Faith only responds to the word. It leaps on the word. Once God gives you a word concerning any area in your life, Act accordingly. Act according to what God says. Because it won't happen. When you pray, you know, each time you pray, when you finish praying, rejoice as somebody who's already received. Rejoice as somebody who's already received. I did not say Rejoice as somebody who's going to receive or who will receive. I said who has already received because when you say amen, amen means so be it. The word of God says, Jesus says, if you ask anything in my name, it says ask that your joy may be full. And then when you say amen, amen means so be it. It means whatever I've prayed for, it settles it, it's done, it's a sealed matter. Now you rejoice. As one who's already received. Amen. That is, that is the principle of faith. Faith calls those things which be not as though they were. Faith doesn't consider 
the senses. It doesn't go by the senses, what I can see or what I, what I can think or what I can feel, touch or hear. Faith is of the heart. Because it comes from the word of God which abides in your heart. Amen. If you look at, go with me quickly, I'm going to close now, Romans chapter 3. The book of Romans chapter number 3. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for faith. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 3. Verse 27. Romans 3, verse 27. Let's read it all together. One, two, three, go. to faith, he cannot do anything. Therefore, what he tries to do, he tries to rob you of the word that God gave you because he knows that word released faith. And as long as he can steal that word from you by getting you to doubt, by getting you to disbelieve, by getting you to thinking, does God really want to heal me? Does God really want to bless me financially? Does God really want it to be well with my family? Does God really want... You understand? The minute you start questioning... What did he do when he came to Eve? He says, did God really say? And he says that to believers. Did God really say? Did God really want it? Oh, that's for, you know, miracles are for them, them years. It's not for now. Hey, listen, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Are you hearing me, somebody? When you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible is loaded with miracles. You look at the life of Jesus. The conception of Jesus was a miracle. Talk to me, somebody. His resurrection and ascension was a miracle. The whole life of Jesus was a miracle. Your life is a miracle. Talk me, tell me some, come and talk to some, talk to yourself, say I'm a miracle baby, I'm a miracle baby, that's who you are, you're a miracle baby, it's a miracle that you're alive, it's a miracle that you're born, it's a miracle that you're still around, it's a miracle, don't tell me there's no such a thing as miracles, our God is a miracle working God, I'm here to tell you, you have faith to birth your miracle, you have faith to birth your miracle. Amen. We are a miracle. Listen. 
a miraculous people. The nation of Israel, their lives is loaded with miracles. Miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. I mean, I can look at my life. How God, man, two times and every time I got retrenched within a week it's a miracle I got employed because when that happened I said to God I didn't say oh what are we going to eat or oh, how are we going to pay the rent or oh, how are we going to do this I never you can ask Pastor Sharon it was never ever part of my vocabulary said to Pastor Shannon, I said, well, God's going to open a door. We have to do what we have to do. We had a vacuum cleaner. I said, well, we'll start the cleaning business. I said, Lord, if it's your will, you make this thing work. The father not worried about the job I lost, the money I lost. I want to know, Lord, how am I going to tithe? That's what I said. My heart was set on how am I going to tithe? In the space of a week, God opened the door. Then I got retrenched again. And I remember, I said, Lord, how am I going to tithe? I said, Lord, how am I going to tithe? God opened the door. Then I started work as a contractor. It wasn't permanent. And you know, even today, there's a sister, a fellow sister, you know, in Christ. We worked together, and we started together from the bottom. And very often, we will talk about how God has brought us through. And she says, you know, I think sometimes, how did you manage? I said, you know what, sister, honestly, I can only tell you it's God. Amen. You know, I learned the secret. I learned the secret. You know, I'm just, you know, I, I just want to give gratitude to God. I was earning six and a half thousand dollars. Talking about nine years ago, six and a half. Of that six and a half, I learned the principle. I was tithing one thousand one hundred rand from six and a half. I tithed over and above what I was doing, and there was no way from the grading that I was, that I could get promoted. You can't jump grades in promotion, you can't. That's the company policy. You can't. You can't do it. But I remained faithful. And I was tired in excess of what I was doing. And I'm telling you, that when I went for one interview, I qualified in every way, but because of the grade, I couldn't get the promotion. I had the door shut in my face. I went to an interview. I just sat down in the interview, the other interview. I just sat down. And the HR person looked at me and said, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to interview. Based on the grading, I can't carry on with this interview. You get invited for an interview and have the door shut in your face. I know what it's like. I've been there. And then I went for another interview. And the same thing happened. 
And the lady afterwards came to me and said, you know, I'm so sorry about what happened. It was an oversight on my side. I said, no, it doesn't matter. My God does this Those are my words to me. Three months later, there was a position that opened up in the corporate division. That same lady spoke to the manager of that section and said, there's a guy, you have to interview this man. I know things are against you, but you have to interview him. I went for the interview. Oh, 
back of the desert looking after sheep and is probably smelling there with the sheep. But there's an appointed time, there's an appointed time where God will bring you out from the desert. He did that with Moses, he did it with David, he did it with Joseph. You see, God did it with all of them folk to show you that he'll do the same thing with you. You may think that you are alone and that you are abandoned, but you're not alone. You're not abandoned because God is with you. He's a co-worker who's already got it worked out. You may say, yeah, but you know, I'll never have an opportunity because that one don't like me. That one says this about me. It doesn't matter what their opinions are. God knows who to move out and who to bring in just to make a way for you. That's the God we serve. That's the God we serve. You understand? You may be sitting with faith and saying, God will heal me someday. Listen, don't wait for someday. Today could be your day. Today could be your moment. You need to get to a place where you say enough is enough. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care about the pain. But by his stripes, I was healed. By his stripes, I was healed. You understand? Let me tell you, people of God, when you read about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when you read about the event of Pentecost, what happened on the day of Pentecost, it was a suddenly. And let me tell you, because of that suddenly, we, be, we have become suddenly people. Say that I am a suddenly person. You are a suddenly person. You see, well, you know, at one moment you can't make ends meet, but suddenly something will happen. Suddenly, we serve the God of the suddenly. The disciples were telling Jesus, they said, Master, we toiled all night and caught nothing, but nevertheless, at your word, you say it, we'll do it. You got to get to a place where you say, Lord, you say it, I'll do it. It's not enough to say, Lord, you say it, I believe it. No, you say it, I'll do it. You say it, I'll do it. And as they did that, they laid down their heads. They just let down on it. All of a sudden, the nets began to break. They had to call for help. You didn't tell you this morning, your nets are about to break. 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 Keep on feeding yourself with the world. This is a faith factory. You want faith, go to the factory. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just share with you the faithfulness of God. You see, it's the same when we saw him. With sowing and reaping, I just want to leave you with this thought. God doesn't multiply what you have. He multiplies what's left in accordance to what you released. He multiplies what's left accordance to what you've released. You understand? I say, listen, you just start somewhere. You start somewhere. It doesn't matter where you start. Then you can start with one rand, you can start with ten rand. You just start somewhere. You start somewhere. You start walking. I shared with you how 
someone who just sowed the seed, sowing the seed, the seed speaks. Listen, for a natural man, it, it sounds foolish, it sounds unbelievable, but it won't. It's not me, it's not it, it's the faith of the person. Faith must be tangible. You're not alone, child of God. You're not alone. 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 Sister Dolly prayed this morning about the keys. There are so many keys that God has given us. So many keys God has given us. He's given us keys. Tell you that we have keys. Use them. We have keys, use them. Say we have keys, use them. Use the keys. The key is the word. The key is prayer. The key is praise. If you want to shut the mouth of the liars, if you want the walls to come crumbling down, if you want the dead to be raised, if you want the sick to be healed, if you want, you understand. What's going to do it? Faith. Don't be given to the by faith, all these things were done by faith. So by faith, you will do it. Someone may tell you, there's no hope for your children because there's nothing happening in South Africa. Let me tell you this morning, child of God, there is hope. Next time someone tells you there's no more hope for our youth, there's no more jobs, there's no more this, no more that, you tell them, listen, the God I serve has already made the way. I'm not telling what you say. Those words that we're sending out into the atmosphere and those words are settling on the soil of our country and that's why we find our country in the state that it is in. But it's time that we change our language. It's time we change our language. It's time we release faith into this nation. It's time we release faith over this country. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let us stand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Thank you for faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by your word. Thank you that faith has come to the people of God this morning. Thank you, Lord, oh God, that we will engage in this life. Not looking at facts, but looking at the word. We will engage and operate in this life, Father God, by the law of faith. By faith we override, Lord, every diagnosis. By faith we override every negative report. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you, my God. Thank you so much. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your word. Your word is truth, O oh God. Lord, I release your grace upon your people. I pray that in blessing you bless them, multiply you, multiply them. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of heaven, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with each and every one of you both now and forevermore in Jesus mighty name the Lord bless you the Lord keep you the Lord cause his face to shine upon you may the Lord God bless the work of your hands in the name of Jesus I thank you now O Lord as I release your grace upon your people that they will prosper in every area of their lives your blessing over their homes, their families, over their workplaces, over their businesses, over their finances. In the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning, oh God. Thank you so much. Thank you for the testimonies of your goodness. Thank you so very much, oh God. In Jesus' blessed name. May God keep you. God strengthen you and grant you peace in Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen.
going to change the scenery, going to change the scenery in your life. All you're going to do for a moment, close your eyes, see that change, speak to God about it. Close your eyes and you just see it. You just say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. You walk in the reality of what you saw when you prayed. What you prayed is more real than what you see. I'll leave you with that thought. What you prayed about, what you prayed about is more real than what you see. So what you see when you pray that is 